Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be a what's for dinner. I'm kind of going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to do pantry and refrigerator meals. So everything that I use, oh shoot, turn off, turn the wrong burn. So everything I use has to come from the pantry or the fridge. So I'm going to turn you around and show you what I'm doing tonight because I've kind of already got this process started and forgot to pick up the camera. Okay, so tonight we're going to do roasted red potatoes. I cooked these, I boiled these the other night, put butter on them, salt and pepper, and we ate them like that. The leftovers I smashed and I'm going to cook them at 400 until they're crispy. And then for the actual like main dish, I'm doing sausage with onions and peppers. These are, these are just peppers from our garden last year. And this is just a regular smoked sausage that we had in the refrigerator that I cut into coins. I, I forgot to show you the package. So, oops. But I'm going to cook this in my cast iron skillet. I won't need a lot of oil, but I will need a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And to get this browned up a little bit, I'm just going to put it in the skillet and let it kind of do its thing. I'm thinking maybe not even half of this onion. And yes, there's another, there's a better way to do that and I don't really care. Get the peeling off of it. Okay. If I need more onion, I'll put it in there. But I've got a, this is my last onion and I have to save it for another meal. Whoa. And I'm just going to kind of bigger pieces of the peppers and the onions because that way it kind of all cooks evenly. So now that the sausage has some color, now that the sausage has some color to it, I'm just gonna put in my onion, trying to break them apart a little bit as I plate them, put them in there, and my peppers. And I probably use the equivalent to one bell pepper, but since I had it in a freezer bag in the freezer. <laughs> from the garden last year, I didn't really have a measurement, but for one pack of smoked sausage, one green bell pepper, and maybe a third of an onion is probably enough, depending on how much you like peppers and onions. I'm just going to kind of 
move that around a little bit. If I have to, I will add in some water or chicken broth to help soften the veggies. But I'm just going to cover this and let it do its thing for a little bit. This has been cooking for about five minutes covered. I am going to add a little bit of water to it to help the vegetables steam just a little bit. And I'm going to cover it back up so they can actually do that. Okay, so these are done. It took about maybe 15 minutes of it covering with me coming and flipping it every five minutes or so. You know it's done when the sausage has some good color on it and the onions and the peppers are tender. So I'm going to take this off the heat and let it cool off a little bit and then I'll be able to eat. The potatoes are also done. It really depends on how crispy you want them. Honestly, I might be able to let them go a little bit longer. So, yeah, I'm going to put these potatoes back in for another probably five minutes. Okay, so now the potatoes are done. They've got a little bit of color on them. I hope you can see that. The ones that are smashed more look better, but <laughs> yeah. But these took about 30 minutes in total. So this is a 30 minute meal if you want it to be and it's you're in a rush that night. So I'm going to let this cool off a little bit and I'm going to eat. Okay, so this is supper, served up, or dinner, or whatever you want to call it. If you want to put your sausage and peppers and onions on a bun, go right ahead. You can top it with cheese. I like my, I, I'll eat mine either way, but I like it like this. And I'm just, I'm going to have some ketchup with my potatoes, but yeah, that's pretty much supper for tonight. Okay, so for today's dinner, even though technically it's noon, so it, I'm doing this for lunch, but it will, it's technically a dinner idea. I've done a version of this for supper before. I'm going to do taco pasta. Um, I had a little bit of ground beef left, and I'm only, I'm the only one eating this since it's lunch. So I had half a pound of ground beef. I'm just browning it up. And after it's browned, I'll add some taco seasoning to it and <laughs> go from there. Okay, so I <clears throat> browned and drained the ground beef and I found, and since this is about using up what I have in my refrigerator, I am going to use up some of the leftover taco meat that I found in there. It's still good, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. put that in there. If you don't have leftover taco meat, all you have to do is double your amount of beef that you cook. Because I wasn't even going to do that and I found that in the fridge and I was looking for something else. So, yeah. Get the use out of it. Okay, so I'm going to dump in some taco seasoning trying to remember that the one is already flavored, but I also have to flavor this enough because I am putting water and pasta in. 
So I'm going to add, let me see how many ounces. Probably about two cups of water. And if I can get it open, a beef bouillon cube. So now I'm going to let this. I'm going to let that cook for a little while uncovered. Okay. okay, this is cooked down a little bit. So at this point, I'm going to add in this. This is homemade Rotel. We just had it in our freezer. So I'm going to put that in there. Let it melt. I'm only doing one because it's jalapenos instead of green chilies. And I don't want this to be so hot that I can't eat it. Because our jalapenos last year, whoo! And since this is about using what you have in the fridge, in the freezer, in the pantry, that's what I'm using. I have Rotel in the pantry, or knockoff Rotel, but I don't need it. I need a whole can with this amount. If I was doing the whole amount of the recipe, then I would need a whole jar of Rotel. Yeah, that's melting really quick. So I'm going to let that melt, let this come up to a boil, and then I will add my pasta. Okay, so this is boiling, so I'm going to add my pasta. I'm just using what I had left of these shells. Actually, I might have to add in a little bit of macaroni in there, too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to add in the rest of this box of macaroni as well. And I'm going to let this cook. Until the pasta is fully done. Okay, so I'm going to have to add a little bit of extra water because this pasta is soaking it up. <laughs> I think the original recipe and calls for like three cups of water. And I only added in like a cup, maybe two. And I've been coming in every now and then and stirring this around. So, I'm going to let the pasta finish cooking. If I, had to add, if I have to add more water, I will. And this is what it looks like right now. Okay, so this is done. I've turned it off. It's still cooking a little bit. I might pull it off the heat. But now I'm going to add in cheese. I'm going to add in mozzarella. A little bit of this Mexican blend and a couple ounces of Velveeta. And the recipe says when you add this in, you're supposed to add in milk as well. I don't think I need the milk because I still have quite a bit of water in here. If I want to add the milk, I will. If I can get this cheese. Okay, I'm just going to add in the rest of this bag of mozzarella. <laughs> A 
Okay, now that the cheese is in there, I'm just going to kind of stir it around and let it melt. And you don't have to stir the cheese into it. You can top it with the cheese if you want. But I just like stirring the cheese into it. And if you want to add onions to this, you can. Peppers. It, it, basically, this is just whatever you want to add. I just... I don't think it needs the onions. Well, honestly, if I could have found the onions, I would have. But I don't have any that I can cut up because I need to save that for like actual supper tonight. And I couldn't find the ones I have in the freezer from our garden last year. So it's possible I used all those. But if I do use onions, I'm cooking the onions with the ground beef. And the recipe doesn't actually call for onion. I did find the recipe after I started cooking this. And I didn't have half the ingredients anyway. But I did taste it to make sure that I had my seasonings right. And I don't think I need half those ingredients. But I don't think it needs the rest of the ingredients because the ho homemade Rotel gave this a nice flavor. As well as I put a lot of taco seasoning in it because I like me some taco seasoning. If you've been here for a while and watched my recipes, you know that. So, yes. But I think all the cheese is melted now. So this is what it looks like. When all the cheese is melted. And I'm going to let this cool off a little bit. And I'm actually going to eat it. Okay, so this is what it looks like served up. I just put it in a bowl. If you wanted to top it with onions or green onions or tomatoes or sour cream, you could. I don't think it needs anything. So I'm just going to go... Eat it like this once it cools off a little bit. It's still steaming out. Yeah, you can see that. I'm surprised it hasn't steamed up my camera. Okay, so today I'm filming our la my last um, pantry dinner idea. I'm doing chicken pot pie tonight. I have shared this recipe before on my channel, so I will leave that video in the cards or down below if I can remember. But let me turn you around. But in this pan, I have three chicken breast and one and a half carrots. I did, I had three carrots left, so I peeled all three and thought I might use all three, but I didn't. But in this pot with the chicken, I have salt, pepper, and, and chicken bouillon. I just used these little cubes because that's what we have on hand right now. I just added one of these because I don't because I did add salt and then when I make the gravy I'll season to taste. But this is usually stuff I try to have on hand so I can just whip it up if I want it. And this is a family favorite around here, so we can, so we'll all eat this, we'll all agree on it, so I like to have the ingredients on hand. I've got this turned to high, I'm just waiting for it to come to a boil, and it is not boiling yet, which is weird, but, yeah. Okay, so after the chicken is done cooking, I removed it from the chicken broth, and I set that aside along with the carrots that I boiled in it and I'm just shredding up three chicken breast and I'm just shredding them up in the glass baking dish that I am going to bake this in. I don't typically use a glass baking dish when I make chicken pot pie. I usually use a cast iron skillet but I didn't have one available this particular night so I just 
used a glass baking dish. It turned out exactly the same. chicken breasts look like when they were all shredded up honestly I probably could have done four and it wouldn't have hurt anything but I only did three and it was plenty of chicken so at this point I'm getting started on the gravy I don't know why the camera is shaking but I, okay it stopped so yeah I added in two tablespoons of butter and I used real butter <laughs> you can use margarine if you want but I use real butter and then I added in about a quarter to a third of a cup of flour and I cooked that until it was I cooked that for about a minute or two just to be sure that the flour taste was not going to be in the gravy once we actually served it up.
that point, I started taking some of the broth out of the pan that I had set aside that I cooked the chicken in and started adding it to the pan that I was making the gravy in. That's why I saved the chicken broth. It's not real chicken broth, but <laughs> you understand. I just added that in a little bit at a time. Stirring it in to make sure all the lumps were broken up because I don't want flour lumps in this gravy. But this can be a little time consuming because you do have to make sure the flour gets broken up, but it's not that bad. I can usually get this dinner done in about 30 minutes once I have my chicken cooked. If you add in the time that it takes to cook the chicken, it's probably about three, four hours to make this meal, but if you already have pre-cooked chicken and you use frozen veggies, it doesn't take anywhere near that long. I always try to use fresh vegetables in this. That's why it takes longer. And because I usually cook my chicken and I don't have a rotisserie chicken. Okay, so I do par-bake my biscuits. I have found that through making this recipe that you have to par bake the crescent rolls or the biscuits depending on what you're putting on the top. So I just opened up a can of biscuits that we had, laid them out on a pan, and baked them according to the package directions for half of the time. This particular can says 13 to 15 minutes. I do remember that. So, I baked these for like seven to eight minutes, which was half about halfway through. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just placing the biscuits on a pan, and then you'll see what I do next. happened to the footage of me showing you um, me scooping the carrots out of the chicken broth and putting them on top of the chicken. You can mix this all up in this pan if you want to. I just kind of layered it like this because I was going to add peas to half of this. My mom does not eat peas. She hates peas. So I added in, I added the carrots, I poured over the gravy, there may have been a few lumps, but that's honestly perfectly fine. I didn't notice any problem. I tried to get all the lumps out, but I didn't this particular day. I kind of moved around the chicken and the carrots a little bit. That way the gravy covered everything. And then I dumped... Or, yeah. Oh, and that's when I put my biscuits in the oven because that's when the oven was preheated. Okay, so no, I baked these for 10 minutes. Maybe I was wrong on the can of biscuits. Maybe it's 13 to 20. I don't... <laughs> When I go back to do voiceovers on this stuff, if I don't make notes, not everything turns out exactly correct. But, yeah. But honestly, I just bake the biscuits for half the time that it says to on the package. Okay, so now I'm sprinkling the peas over half of this. Yes, they were frozen. Were they over frozen? Were they freezer burned? No. They were perfectly fine. I think it's just because I didn't use a whole 
bag and they were sealed that they kind of looked like that but they tasted fine but I did kind of dip those down in the gravy a little bit but I did this this way that way when I, if because if I would have put the peas on top of the carrots I'm afraid when I dumped the gravy over it the peas would have went everywhere and I didn't want that because I wanted to be able to half this because my mom does not like peas. The rest of us, we don't care. My mom will not eat this with peas. So, yeah. And that's what it looks like once all the once I added the peas in, you can see how I halved it. Okay, so here are the biscuits, par baked. I ended up having to use a fork to get them up off the pan because they weren't all the way done, so they were kind of sticking to the pan. But I just placed the par baked biscuits on top. And when I say par-baked, I mean like half-baked, for anybody who doesn't cook and doesn't know that word. <laughs> but I just placed the biscuits on top of the pie mixture. And then this will go back in the oven. And I think I baked it for an additional... I didn't set the timer, I just, I think it was an additional 15 to 20 minutes because the biscuits do take a little bit longer to get done all the way after you add them on top of the pie filling, so yeah, just let that be noted. And then this is what it looks like after it's been fully cooked. Everything in the pie filling was already cooked. I was just finishing baking the biscuits. And I like to do that on top of the pie filling. That kind of, way it kind of warms everything up and thickens everything up. This is what it looks like when it's been served. I just make it alongside, ma serve it alongside mashed potatoes. So that was it for my three pantry dinner ideas. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not done so already, hit the red subscribe button down below. Other than that, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.